School shootings are on the rise, and whether or not you live in Florida, or whether or not your child's school has recently gone under some sort of violent attack, or has had some sort of threat, um, the chances are your child knows what's going on in our world. And so a lot of parents are wondering, how do I talk to my child about these horrific and terrible events? So I wanted to make sure to address this topic. I've actually had multiple people reach out to me. And so I wanted to make sure to do a video that would be helpful in walking you parents through how to best talk to your children about these sorts of tragedies. This is not a fun topic, but it is a necessary one, and it's something where I hope to bring some peace into your heart and into your home in this really, really tough subject. So I actually did a live Facebook video on this, and so I'm going to go ahead and cut that into this video here so that you can check it out. Um, please forgive the lighting and whatnot. I know that my live stream videos are not necessarily as high quality as when I am using my better equipment. So I hope that this is encouraging to you and I look forward to hearing how some of the conversations went with your child. And of course, feel free to ask questions along the way in the comments. And be sure to share this video so that we can get as many parents equipped as possible. And of course, like my channel because I'm going to do a follow-up because just learning how to talk to your kiddos about this um, was not enough for some parents. They wanted to hear some other ideas, which I will share with you at the end of this video. Enjoy. In light of everything that has been going on in terms of school shootings, I have been asked by some people to explain how exactly to talk to your kids about tragedies and really scary, traumatic things like this. So I definitely wanted to get on here and give you guys some ideas and help take away some of the fear that has to do with this. So if you don't know who I am, my name is Jillian. I'm a licensed clinical professional counselor and my business Fly on the Wall Counseling provides online counseling and coaching for parents who are needing some help with their kiddos. So what I do is I help to equip them to be able to confidently manage their children's challenging behaviors and emotions to restore peace to their homes. And you can imagine that I work with some cases that have some kids who have some pretty intense behaviors. And the way I became an expert in child behavior is I put a lot of time in working with children and teenagers who have behavior and mood disorders. And so I have some experience with kiddos who have oppositional defiance disorder, um, intermittent explosive disorder, um, s some of the more severe behavior disorders that are out there. I'm not going to list them all because a lot of you may not even know what they are, but I have a lot of experience in that. And so I have a, a different perspective on, on some of these shootings. Um, never do I think they're okay. They're always tragic and, and horrible. Um, but I, I do have a little bit of a different perspective just because I, I can so easily empathize with these kids who just make really horrible choices. Um, and it's the, the many, many horrible choices they make over and over and over again in their life that end up getting to them to the point where they make these tragically horrendous choices. Um, but all of that aside, you guys want to be able to talk to your kids about this. And so I want to give you some tips and um, please feel free to share this video and let other parents know how they can support their kids in this time. Um, and if you are catching the replay on this, I'd love for you to comment and let me know you are here. So here are some tips. So first of all, you can 
you should not really start a conversation. I almost said you cannot. You could. But I would say it's very wise to not start a conversation with your child until you have personally dealt with all of your emotions and reactions to this incident. So if you are thinking about this and it is bringing up some pretty strong and intense emotions in you, you really need to work through those first before you talk to your child. When you talk to your child, it needs to be all focused on them and not you. So you need to really work through some of that. What are your opinions on this? What do you think should be taught as a result of this? What do you think are the key takeaways that you really want your child to get out of this situation? And of course, this is going to be a little bit different, maybe depending on their age. <clears throat> and let me just say right off the bat that if the lesson that you feel like needs to be taught is over your child's head or if anything I am suggesting to utilize in a conversation with your child um, are things that you feel like are unrealistic, then your child's not ready for this type of a discussion. And that's okay because they are going to be under your care for a long time. And so you may have, you know, kids who are three or four, um, five, really like kindergarten, maybe even older, totally depends on their emotional development. Um, and if they are not ready, that's okay. And may something happen in their daycare, may something happen in their school. Nothing is promised, absolutely. But that doesn't mean that you need to engage in a conversation with your child that they're just not ready for, regardless of the situation at hand. So for example, to give you a contrast, there are tons of sexual predators out there and you're not talking to your three-year-old about sexual predators and the horrors of all of that. So same thing with this, right? We need to be appropriate about it and if a child cannot emotionally handle it, it's going to spin them into anxiety. Um, they're not gonna want to go to school ever and then perhaps this is not the time to really talk to them about it. Maybe there needs to be some distance. Um, you know your child best, and so you really need to think through that. So sort out your own emotions. Figure out what it is that you think is important to teach. Keep that in the back of your mind. And if you are sensing your child's not ready, they're not ready, and that's okay. Okay, so next... You want to know, you want to find out what they heard. So it may be that your child doesn't even know anything that's going on. They may not know anything about the shooting that happened. And so you bringing it up could be a big shock to them. The way you approach things is going to be really different if that's the case. You want to know what they've heard. So like I said before, we're going to really focus on the child. We're really going to focus on them and make sure they have... Um, your full attention and that they're able to fully express what they need to express. So the first thing you want to do is ask them what they've already heard. Now, this may let you know, um, you know, how much exposure they've had, um, how they're processing this. It's going to let you know how much detail, you know, how gory the details are that they've heard. Um, you know, it's, it's going to help you to be able to know how much to share or how little to share with them based on the information they have. Because, you know, if a younger child is exposed to more gory details that really aren't necessarily appropriate for them, um, you're going to have to work through those anyway. But if they haven't heard any of that stuff, you don't want to be the one that, that piles that on them and gives them undue stress. So find out what they know. You can let them know if something is not true. Um, you can verify that that is what happened. And then the next thing is, as you are talking to them, or as they are talking to you rather, and sharing with you what they've heard, you can just simply reflect to them, you know, wow, that was pretty scary, wasn't it? Or that was a really horrible thing. You know, how do you feel about that? You just, you can keep asking them 
questions to learn more and more about what they've been exposed to and what's really rattling in their brain. That way you're only speaking to the things that they really need to hear about and not adding extra traumatic or horrendous information into their minds. So make sure that you are tracking with them. If you see that they don't care, then reflect to them like, wow, it seems like this isn't really bothering you. And maybe it's not. And so maybe this doesn't have to be a full-blown huge conversation. Or maybe they're, you know, looking at the ground and have a really quiet voice and rubbing their hands and you can let them know, wow, this, I can see that this is really stressful for you. Um, you know, how are you feeling about all of this? So just pay attention to what they're doing. Um, and so if you noticed, you're not really adding much to the conversation at this point. They are helping to steer things at this point and expressing themselves. Now, it's also very important for you to remember, this is not a time for a politics discussion. This is not the time for you to tell them, um, you know, that teachers should or shouldn't do whatever, or that gun laws should or shouldn't be whatever, um, or that schools need to do this or not do this. This is not a time to be discussing political things with them. It's not a time to be saying that um, somebody's to blame. So this is not a, you know, well, it was this person's fault. And, you know, they should never. So we're not placing blame. We're not taking political sides or, or talking about politics. Um, and we're also you know, not going to be slandering people. Um, you know, and these are things where maybe you're thinking like, oh, well, why would I do that? But we get our emotions really tied up in this. And so that's why I encourage you before you even dive into this conversation with your kids, you need to sort out your emotions and get to a place where you can remove those emotions from the situation so that you can be 100% present with your child and caring for them. Um, instead of feeling like you're teaching them a certain stance on some kind of a debate um, or placing blame on a certain figure or slandering different people. That's not appropriate in this situation. It adds more stress and tension um, and it's, it's just not going to get your child to open up. It's not going, it's, you're going to distract from what you're really wanting to do for your child. So you need to sort that stuff out and not throw it into the mix. Um, while you're having this discussion. So that's definitely important. So after you've asked them what they've heard, you've been reflecting some of the emotions that they're expressing while sharing this with you, the next thing you want to do is just simply say, what questions do you have? What questions do you have? Because they probably have some in their mind already. So again, we're letting them steer this conversation. And this is going to take so much stress off you parents to feel like you have to come to the table to explain everything or you have to start some big conversation and have all these facts together and what do you and do you not share. You don't have to worry about that. Ask them what they know, reflect some feelings back to them, ask how they're feeling, ask what questions that they have. This way, they're getting exactly what they need and you're not adding anything extra that they don't need. So what questions do they have? And you know what? If you don't know the answer, it's okay to say, I don't know. That's a really tough question and I really wish I knew the answer to that, but I just don't. Um, you know, and this is why also it's important to know what you think about this or what you believe about this or, or what your feelings are that you dealt with that already because when they ask these questions, you're gonna want some answers that you know you truly believe in instead of coming up with something under pressure if it's somewhat of a tough answer. So really think through those things so that when you get to the point where you're asking your child what questions they have, you can answer them. Okay, so so far really, 
you're not doing any lecturing, you're not pro providing any extra information, um, you're just allowing them to steer the conversation and get their needs met. So hopefully this is taking some pressure off of you and making you feel a little bit more at ease about how to handle this. So and I see a few of you are on here live watching, so it's good to see you. I'd love to have you say hi. Um, so after what questions do they have, the next thing you can ask is, what are you learning from all of this? Okay, so everything so far has been a question. You are not sharing any information other than answering their questions. Okay, so how are, what are they learning from all of this? You know, it, this helps you to know what do you need to go over in this next and final step. So maybe they are already have learned the lesson that you want them to learn from the discussions and things they've heard at school, through thinking through things, and through sharing things with you in this moment. Maybe they've already learned those lessons. Or maybe they'll say, I don't know, <laughs> which is very possible. They may say, I don't know when I'm learning from this. Um, and so at that point, once you've allowed them to speak their voice, let them be heard, know what they've dealt with, know what they've heard, know what they are comfortable talking about. At that point, you can enter in and say, well, you know, I, I so appreciate you sharing these things with me. I really care about you and I wanna share a couple things that I think is important to learn from this, okay? And so that is those are gonna be the things that in step one that we talked about that you really thought through and said, these are, you know, like the two or at max three things, I would say one or two things that you um, really want your child to learn from this. And that's where you can share it. They're going to be so much more willing to hear what you have to say if you've gone through those first steps because you're not coming in and going into lecture mode and they're like, oh my gosh, mom, or oh my gosh, dad, like, I already heard about all this stuff at school. Like, I don't want to talk to you about it. I don't want to hear somebody else telling me stuff. They might just tune you out completely. So hear what they have to say. And if they give you that right off the bat, like, I don't want to talk about this, it's not the right time. It's not the right time. And that's okay. It might be a little too anxiety provoking for them, um, but they may not be able to put those words to it. So just know that if there are things you really want to talk to them and have those teachable moments with, if they're not ready for it, wait a few days, come back to it, have that teachable moment. Um, and you'll know exactly what you want them to think through because you already went through the work of processing through it yourself and identifying the one or two things you really want to drive home about this. So I really hope this was helpful and I would love for you to share this video along to encourage some other parents out there who are likely wanting to have these same conversations with their kiddos. So you all have a great night and I will talk to you later. Thanks. Bye. All right. So I trust you are feeling way more confident in how to talk to your child about these events after the fact that they happened. But let me tell you, I've had a lot of parents since then reach out to me and say, well, how do I talk to my child about feeling safe? And how do I talk to my child about making sure they know to report something like this without completely rocking their world? So I did another training on all things school shooting and violence related that I'm going to be uploading next week. So make sure to keep an eye out for that. We are going to be covering the topic of, you know, what happens if your child hears a shooting is going to happen? How can you make sure that they are going to be ones to report it? What are some of the signs of anxiety and how can you identify that in your child and make sure that they are feeling safe and secure? What are some of the harsh realities that we need to face and just understand that they're a part of our life now and, and how do we navigate that? What should the schools be doing and how should the parents be interacting with the schools about issues like this? And finally, what does mental illness have to do with 
these violent crimes. So be sure to subscribe so you don't miss that next video because I know that is going to help you think through this, feel much better, and also help your child to feel like they have a little bit more peace as they go into their school. Thanks everyone.